I wanted to make sure I got all the facts before I did this video. I know this has been going around on the news. It caught my attention. And as usual, you know, it seems like the fake news media is getting worse and worse every minute. We're going to talk about this situation with these demonstrations that was taking place early this week. MLK Day or something like that. Uh, D.C. near the Lincoln Memorial on the mall. Now, the fake news and any of the people, that's one thing I will, one of the few things I will agree with Trump about. Fake news, liberal media, and Fox News, because Fox News is mainstream, fake news also, all of them are fake news, and they're all the enemy of the people, especially us. They covered it one way. And of course, Fox, you know, they have their different slant, the fair and balanced angle. But I'm going to talk about what I feel is most important. And I think it's going to be maybe a little different than what other people are talking about this video. People from our community, because we know how the, you know, the so-called, particularly the white males are covering this story. But we're going to cover from a from a different angle. Now. I've been familiar with these so-called Hebrew Israelite brothers for a couple of years now. And really, this is nothing new. You could go look it up. They've had this here in the United States and across the world starting about the 1880s. So this has been around for more than 100 years now. This is nothing new. Now, I can understand what they're saying. I see where they're coming from. Um, I agree with them on a number of things. I can't go as far as they go. I've always said, knowing the history of our people, and you read about what happened to the Hebrews, the Jews of the Bible, I've always noticed how it's just been so uncanny on how it's similar. And if you read those passages in the Bible, you know, you would think it's like, man, you know, is, is this us or, or are we cursed? You know, what did we do? To deserve all these things that have happened to us. No one in the history of the world is, you know, like us, the, you know, the Afro diaspora. No one else has this, this story and this history that we have. Okay. But my whole thing is we know we have an Afro connection. Now, I think we're more than just that as well as indigenous, but you know, what is called quote unquote, so-called America or Turtle Island you know, as well as other places across the world, because the further back you go, the darker the people look to be, even if the people nowadays are more so associated with being lighter in some of these locations like Europe or Asia, whatever the case may be. But we can't, because what happened to us was slavery, we can't even trace our history even deep and beyond into slavery. We can't even trace our history even back to the continent to see what tribe we maybe came from back on the continent, okay? And that's going back about four, 500 years. You know, and that goes for us mainlanders here, Americans, uh, Canadians, and even those islanders and Caribbeans. So when you get into this whole Hebrew-Israelite thing, if you're going to try to make that claim and that connection, you're going to have to go back, I would say, almost at least about 2,000 years. you know. And if you can't go back about four or 500 years and say, well, I come from this tribe, but we come from that tribe. These are my people. This is where we came from. This was originally our language, or our culture. How are you going to go back about 2,000 years? You're going back four times as much, four or five times as much. Okay? And... These DNA ancestry genealogy tests, it doesn't work how people think it works, okay? I'm not going to get into the particulars. You can go look it up if you want to for yourself. But it works when you're comparing samples of either living or even say like deceased if you exhume a corpse. If you take the two DNA samples of two people, you can say, oh, this is probably... You know, your, your your mother, your father, or your uncle or a cousin, you know, 
And that DNA doesn't lie. That DNA is about, especially if it's paternal or maternal, 99%, if not better. But when you're trying to say, oh, well, you know, you came from this land with these people and uh, you may have come here from thousands of years ago. They're not that advanced on this stuff, just like they try to talk about, you know, and, and they're doing some things. But just like they try to talk about cloning and cocktail babies, I know there's been some recent stories, but it, it's not that advanced. They don't have that much figured out yet. They're, they're not that good. OK, so. DNA isn't going to tell you that. The only thing that's going to tell you that if you have some kind of documented history that, you know, whether if it's um, from outside sources or other sources or professional sources or some kind of archaeology or something, anthropology, or if your family just simply has maintained your documented history throughout the generations and then you know who you are, you know who your people are, you know what tribe you came from. So, I agree with a lot of what these Israelite brothers say, you know, it really has inspired me to study and to get deeper in the word, whether if I need to converse with them or debate with them, maybe fellowship if it's the right camp, you know, uh, or any other people, because a lot of them, they, they know their stuff, they read, they study. I mean, I know a lot of people like to make fun of them and I get it, you know, they, they may be taking a little bit too far. I mean, but a lot of these cats, they do read, they do study, some better than others. Uh, they know what they're talking about, and they do their, their biblical study, and as well, they do their uh, historical study. And I can tell you this, the way that these brothers uh, talk on the streets, and when you see them and all the videos and stuff like that, I'm just sitting here thinking, I'm like, why didn't we get anything like this all these years in the church? I mean, when my grandfather was a country preacher, you know, and he didn't really... He didn't quite preach to that level. You know, he definitely got in, into some things that other preachers maybe wouldn't, but he didn't get deep like that. You know, this is going on a like a Jeremiah Wright type of level stuff, you know. And, you know, I don't want to be too critical of the church, but especially for our people, I'm just thinking, how come they wasn't giving this stuff, you know, and, and the church was is supposed to be such a vital part of our community and it's leaving us ill-prepared to not just, you know, spiritual warfare with everything we have to deal with, but in this country and across the world and with our history, everything we've had to deal with. I just feel like it's leaving us ill-equipped to deal with these things. And, and they should really be raising up the next generations to go forward and, and, and deal with all these issues, whether it's issues that we get from within our community, from our own, you know, or issues we get outside of the community, foreign or domestic, but I'm going to get into this situation with um, these demonstrations that were happening in the Capitol, Washington, D.C., Washington City, District of Columbia, United States, and um, let me touch on some things that everyone else maybe isn't talking about. Uh, now, that's my main thing. I Like I say, I, I can see the similarities. I think they're they misinterpret some, a lot of scriptures um, or they read maybe just one passage. Uh, but they don't get they don't read the whole context of, of you know, the meat of, of what's being delivered in, in a number of these passages. And, you know, I was thinking about this video. Now, I want to stay on code, you know, that's especially moving forward. That's a big priority for me. I really want to stay on code, but I just feel like I have to talk about some things, but I'm not really going to so much attack these brothers, even though they definitely did things that I wouldn't do, but I'm going to attack the media for what they didn't cover. Now, these brothers, I guess these, you know, the, the people who identify as Native Americans, they were having some kind of a demonstration at the mall somewhere um or pretty much near the footsteps of the lincoln memorial so that's why these brothers were there because if you've if you've heard these these israelites before their spiel you know they say that we the afro people you know the so-called black people the so-called hispanics 
and even the so-called indigenous or Native American, Indian, American Indian, whatever you want to call them, that we are all of the, the, the children of Israel and we didn't do right back in the land. And then that's why we ended up over here because of the colonizer and everything that happened to us. And, you know, they're saying that we're the true Jews. So they went out there to fellowship with the with the indigenous groups to say, hey, you know, the the spiritualism, the 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 mysticism, the false gods, the animism, the animal worship and all that kind of stuff. You shouldn't be doing those things. That's what caused us to have our land taken away uh, to get uh, our kingdom was lost. Jerusalem was lost. The temple was sacked. It was spoiled and plundered by Gentiles. And that's why we ended up in slavery. And we ended up here in a foreign land that's not our own. But you're not who you think you are. You're not these Indians living on reservations. You're Jews. And that's what they were there for. Now, in another video that I made, I said, anytime I go anywhere, especially if it's a significant trip, Anytime I make a move, I always check my surroundings. I check the area. I see what's going on. And if you go into, you know, Washington, D.C., even with this government shutdown, and it's over a, a weekend period, and you got the Martin Luther King holiday coming up, you know, there might be some events going on. So I'm going to check and I'll say, okay, you know, you know, who's there? Is there anything going on in town? Who's going to be there, where they're going to be, what times they're going to be there, what's the group, what's their numbers and everything. But, the, you know, I don't know if they did any research into that, but these brothers showed up. It was about like four or five of them, and they were going to go there to try to fellowship and to teach and, 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 and minister to the these indigenous people. Now, they also, I guess, had some kind of, anti, you know, I guess there was like a pro-abortion uh, pro crowd there. And in an anti-abortion crowd. And supposedly on the anti-abortion crowd, there was this Catholic high school there on a field trip, I assume, of these high school kids. You know, they were probably like 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. And, and I, from the video, it looked like a lot of, I don't know if it was an all-boys school or not, but it looked like mainly a lot of boys, but not a lot of females. Okay. And so the kids were there also. And I didn't know if they knew they were going to be there, but they were there. So these Israelites, they're there in the area, in the pavilion, doing what they normally do. And they got into it with some of the, you know, indigenous people and everything, because you know how they tend to come across. You know, these brothers are going to be very animated. You know, they're going to be very, they're going to have that zeal, you know. And, and I guess in a way we should all have that type of zeal. When it comes to the Lord and when it comes to the word. But you know, like I say, these brothers maybe take it to a little bit of an extra level. All right. But it was nothing. You know, it, it was some situations here and there. With the indigenous people, but it wasn't like you would see later on with these with these white boys. And. Um, I lost my train of thought. You know, so like I said, they're getting into it with with these um, with these white kids. I'm mean, I'm sorry, they're getting into it with the with the indigenous people. You know, some of them were peaceful, some of them were a little aggravated. You know, but there was really no gathering that was forming. The gathering didn't really start to take place until these white kids showed up. Now, here's one thing that I'm asking myself, and I don't know if any of the mainstreams if they brought this up on their broadcast because I don't really watch what they do. I mean, I, I look at certain news sources. I read the articles. I don't really watch TV or videos too much as far as the mainstream. And there's a number of YouTubers that I, I look to to get their perspective. I value their opinion. Now, this is supposed to be a, even though I guess it's a protest or something that's politically charged, it's a Catholic school. It was a school trip, kind of like a field trip. My first, you know, and it's, you know, my first thing is, where's the chaperones? Now, I saw maybe like one or two adults in the video, and I took the time to look at the whole video. 
uh, it's about two hours. Um, one of the, you know, the Israelite brothers, he uploaded a video. His video was about hour, 46 minutes. And then there was another video that was about 10 minutes. I'm assuming it's from one of the white kids that's in the crowd because it was more amongst their ranks. And then you got to see some things uh, that you couldn't see from the Israelite dudes because even though eventually, you know, there was like a, I don't want to say a confrontation, like a fight or anything, even though, you know, there was some exchanges that were taking place, they never really got that close, you know, so you never really got to see anything from inside the camp of the white kids. It was only from the perspective more so of the Israelite brothers. So I said, let me watch this thing. Let me let me look at the whole thing so I can get the context, see it for myself. And that way I won't be susceptible to the misinformation that's being put out there by the mainstreams. And I saw one male adult at one point in time where he was telling the kids eventually when it, you know, there were these exchanges and he was saying, OK, get back, get back or stay on this line. Don't come any closer. But look, you know, if if you feel like you don't want to be a part of this and you're not agreeing with these guys have to say, and like I say, I wouldn't really agree completely either, you know, and apparently they were waiting for their buses to show up and pick them, pick them up from that location in that pavilion courtyard area. But if you just didn't really want any issues to me, you would have kept as much space as possible. And I want to see if there's maybe going to be a follow up. It may be more so in, in local papers than the national news, but I want to see if there's going to be any follow up. You know, what was going on with this school? What was going on with the chaperones? What was going on maybe with the teachers, the, the adults? You know, if you got maybe a, a couple hundred students and they're mainly boys and, you know, boys can get to be a little rambunctious, you know, you don't have particularly males. You don't have any male chaperones or teachers or coaches or anything that could, you know, headmasters, uh, priests or anything like that. You don't have any any adults that can maintain the order. They can say, hey, guys, you know, we're not going to get involved in this stuff. You know, they're, you know, a group of guys that believe this, but we're not going to get into that. Let's just stay over here. Let's let them do their thing. Let's keep the distance. We're just not going to pay attention to it. We're going to ignore it. We're going to stay over here. We're going to wait for the buses. If there was something like that, and if I was chaperoning a group of young people, and if there was a group that I thought was, let's just say controversial, I would say, okay, you know, we're going to stay over here. You know, we're going to um, let them do their thing, have their space. You know, we could talk about it on the bus. Or we could talk about it as a group. You know, we could pray about it, fellowship about it as a group. But, you know, let's let them do their thing. And we're going to do our thing over here. We're just going to keep the peace, wait for the buses to show up, get on the buses, and go back to where we need to be. But that's not what happened, okay? These, I don't want to make it seem like they, it was a riot or violent or anything like that, but they were definitely unruly. There was no control. There was no authority. You know, they were acting very silly. And I get it. They're high school kids. You know, we've all been there. But they were being really silly, okay? And the Israelite dudes weren't even there for them. Okay, they weren't there for any abortion rally. They weren't there for any, you know, right wing this or political that. They they weren't there for any of that. They were there for the Indian people. Okay, and then these white kids started getting involved and they started acting silly and making mockery and jeering and stuff like that. You know, uh, and many of them didn't even really have any any kind of like questions. It was a few, you know, one or two here or there, but. No, they weren't engaging. They weren't asking questions. They didn't pull out their Bible. It's like, okay, let's have a discussion or let's have a, a civil debate or anything like that. You debate your position and then I'll debate my position. You bring your facts and I bring my facts. And then we're going to bring up these sources to see who's correct and who's telling the truth or who's more accurate. None of that. They were just being silly. Okay. And none of these adults had control. Where are these adults? You know, for a group of people that talk about law and order with you know who in the White House, there was no law and order whatsoever. They let their kids run around and do everything. But, oh, for everything else, for the border, for the wall, you know, there's got to be law and order. 
So you're probably not going to hear that on Fair and Balanced Fox News. And I don't even think CNN and the rest of those other types, the mainstreams, are going to bring it up. Okay, now, now you know a lot of the position that these Israelite brothers are going to talk about. I mean, they're going to talk about things that we talk about, too. They're going to talk about history. They're going to talk about our people. They're going to talk about what happened to us. They're going to talk about slavery, persecution, Jim Crow, the killings, the beatings, cities, towns, communities being burnt up, women being raped, men being sodomized, children being fed to alligators for bait. They're going to talk about all those things, okay? And you know how it is. I don't care if they call themselves right wing or left wing. You know how it is when you bring these facts to people who might get a little sensitive or might get a little defensive, even though that they swear that they don't believe in political correctness. So... The Israelite brothers were calling out things that America has done against us and saying, look, you know, you've done these things to us. If you don't make amends, if you don't make it right, uh, if you don't repent, provide some type of penance, reparations to move forward and extend that olive branch, there's going to be a judgment that falls upon this nation. And look, you don't have to think, believe you're an Israelite. To understand that, okay? And once again, that's the type of stuff that Jeremiah Wright will talk about. And that's why they don't like that type of message. That's why, you know, these so-called white evangelicals will be some of the main ones who will go out against liberation theology. When Christ himself was probably one of the biggest and maybe the originator of liberation theology because he railed against all types of oppression and all types of hypocrisy that were going on at the time and they're calling these guys out they're like well hey if you say that you know if you're going to make america great again and this and that and the other if you're going to say america is so great and america is going to have a glorious future how is that going to be possible when you have this in the past and you have this hanging over your head and if you don't make amends for the sins of the past what future do you think that you're going to be able to reap? And, you know, typical. These white kids, I think his name was Omen or something like that. Like, oh, Omen, Omen, come here, Omen, come here, Omen. You know, and like, well, we, we have this black kid in our group, you know. And I'm like, really? Now, usually I would expect that more so from a white liberal. You know, and Malcolm X in the past has definitely told us about the white liberal and how they operate. Now, these, these are some MAGA hat wearing, supposed to be Trump supporting. I'm going to get into this because I knew that not all these Trump supporters were necessarily what they would call, quote unquote, conservative. But even these Catholics or so-called Catholics. But they went and grabbed maybe like one or two, because this is mainly all white boys. They went and got one of like one or two white uh, black kids Afro kids, I should say, in the group to put them in front like, well, see, uh, it, we can't, you know, despite what you may be saying, we can't be bad or we can't be racist or you can't hold us to any of this because uh, we've got a couple of black friends here. And I'm like, really? And they just threw these guys out there in front like shields as just the token Negroes like they were mascots or something for the team. I mean, it was, and look, I, I get it. They're young, you know, and they may not fully understand this. You know, they may not realize that other people know how the game goes and how this game is played. But to do something like that, like, oh, I've got the ultimate rebuttal to this. Oh, I'm going to get one of the black kids. He's like, oh, we love him. We love him. He's our friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and these will be the same type of white boys that you'll see on the Internet doing blackface, dressing up in Halloween costumes, Trayvon Martin, Freddie Gray, going through these hallways and these schools, talking to these Hispanic kids, talking about build that wall. Now, I get it. 
none of that was necessarily witnessed during this particular event. But we've seen these other things that have been posted on the internet. That's why when the mainstream media went out there with that narrative, that's why it was so believable. Because with the rise of you know who, I'm I'm gonna really not try to say his name moving forward, you know, with the rise of you know who, we see people who've been emboldened, we've seen an increase of these things. So that's why it's not so hard to believe. And it, it you know, this isn't grown men and adults that we've been seeing doing this on social media and videos. These are kids in high school, same age these kids on this field trip, you know, and I mean, to me, that's like, okay, that's so lame. You know, you can't even argue the position. You can't even um, talk about the facts. You can't even acknowledge what happened. And these 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 kids are, are that young. And yeah, you know, like I say, I, over the years, I've I've had interactions with white boys like that in school and stuff, different school functions, activities. So, you know, it, it's nothing new to me. But now being able to look back at that, I'm older. It's like you don't realize how bad you look and how foolish you look using these tired excuses. One of them was trying to say, well, you know, uh, black people, uh, the reason why slavery happened was because, you know, Africans, you know, black people sold other black. I'm like, really? Okay, yeah, it happened. But what, maybe like 5%? So you want to dismiss the 95% of the slave trade that people like you, your ancestors were responsible for. But you're going to throw out the 5% of the Africans? And, and the internal slavery or indentured servitude that took place is like, really? You know, which is basically kind of like blaming the victim. But like I say, that, you know, at least I can maybe have a little bit more respect for them because they're young. But then that shows you how much worse it looks when you have older people who go out there and make those arguments. Now, I'm also going to get into this whole, this, this hypocrisy of the right, the so-called right. I guess that's why you have this term now, the alt-right. You know, but all it really what it is in many situations, what that conservative or right, right-wing mantra, what that really means, all it is is just either a cover for either white supremacy or denial or racism, or prejudice, you know, or don't come talk to me about your issues. I don't care because that's what a lot of the kids were saying when these Israelite dudes were giving them the message. All that is is a cover. Now, this is supposed to be a Catholic school, a conservative Christian Catholic school. They're wearing MAGA hats. They got those red hats on. And they're supposed to be in, in the. In the grounding of the Bible. OK. So then these brothers start going in talking about, um, you know, like the headship situation as you know, the man is the headship of the house and the woman is the authority. They started talking about, and I'm just going to say this right now, this isn't to be disparaging or mean-spirited towards anyone. Uh, this isn't hate speech. If, if, if you're just sensitive and offended, just keep it moving, okay? Because everybody's offended by everything now. But if you, if you identify as Catholic, I would think you should have these values, so they start going in, talking about homosexuality, sodomites, lesbians, you know. And then these kids responded, who cares? You're homophobic. Oh, God. oh guys, that's pretty messed up, guys. Oh, that, that, that's pretty homophobic. And I'm like, wow, you know. Now I could see if they're like, well, you know, you're right about that. Well, the Bible does say that. Um... Maybe you're being a little too aggressive with it, but but you are right. No, no, they didn't. They didn't say that. You know, 
they accuse these guys and pointed a finger just like the left would. And we think that the left is supposed to be the snowflake. See, that's why I've been trying to tell people that you got snowflakes on the left wing and you have snowflakes on the right wing, too. You know, we see how big of snowflakes they were because how offended they got when, oh, you don't stand for the national anthem. You don't stand for the presentation of the flag. You don't stand for the colors. You're disrespecting the troops. You're disrespecting the, the veterans. You hurt my feelings. You're not patriotic. You don't love America. I'm offended. See, the left, they get offended very easily for certain things. And the right, they get offended very easily for certain things too. And at the end of the day, we just got one big old pile of snowflakes. Okay, now this wasn't that much of a surprise to me because I had known that amongst people who consider themselves to be, you know, quote unquote, religious, you know, because there's lots of people who have religion. That in this country that Catholics and Jews tend to be the most what they would call liberal. They don't really they don't tote the line like the 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 white evangelicals they say are supposed to now i would even question them as well i guess like the white protestants or white evangelicals i would question a lot of them too but i mean they were like hey guys why are you talking about this why are you talking about that that's hateful you you know you're being sexist and you're being homophobic you know and I don't want to perpetuate any stereotypes or anything like that, but this is kind of the observations that we've been making. There's a difference between, and I could truly say that we really more so have a culture in this country. We've almost been forced to, to maintain ourselves and to, to, to separate ourselves and stand out. And they just do things differently in general on average than we do you know and i'm not trying to legitimize these narratives that they're trying to go out there now with well you know the the afro community is homophobic and and the afro man today in the afro community is the white man you know and the afro woman's biggest oppressor is the afro man you know i don't want to go out there to perpetuating these narratives that they're trying to spin now but see that that goes to show you that you know these guys and, and i've observed it over the years of you know you know when you have some of these fit in feminine men you'll be an infeminine white man and a guy who at least you assume is supposed to be straight and then they'll be playing around and keep keying and stuff and you know you know, let, letting them play with it. And it's like, look, you know, it's like, look, all this homophobic stuff they try to say, because look, I'm not afraid of anyone, definitely not anyone like that. I'm not afraid. So, but it's just, I'm not going to play like that. I don't play around like that with dudes that are straight when they, you know, because you know how it was sometimes back in the day in school with dudes try to play. At least you assume they were playing. I'm like, chill out, man. That ain't even funny. So yeah, I, I don't play like that at all, whether if you really are that way or if you're not. You know, but they just don't bring, in general, the same type of masculine energy that we do. Or they bring it maybe in just a different way. And like I say, these, and these brothers, you know, they were just, I mean, basically what the word says. That's That's all they were doing, you know. And in those parts where I feel like that they were using the Bible appropriately and interpreting everything properly, I was like, well, you know, I was like, hey, they're right about that. I can't really disagree with that, you know, and OK, they use maybe some certain choice words. But see, once again, when we get into how certain terms are in the English language. 
things will be expressed differently in the English language than how they maybe were originally expressed. Or even in English, you'll have expressions that in the past meant one thing, and in today and modern time, they mean something completely different. And I've looked at a lot of these terms that people say, oh, that's an offensive term. It's a pejorative. It's derogatory. It's slander. And then when you look at the history of the word, you look at the etymology of the word, it's like, well, see, originally it meant this. Originally it meant that. You know, but at least I will give them credit. All of these other groups out here that go out being protected classes and minorities. See, they go out there and they control their narrative. They control their identity, how they want to identify, how they choose to identify, how you have to address them, how you have to acknowledge them. And as a people, we really haven't done that. So I will give them credit for that. But as far as they've gone out, well, that's offensive. That's hate speech. That's homophobic. It's like, no, because because we could we could look up the history of the word. We could look up how it's been used over the years. We could look up the origin of the word and I could show you. And once I break that down and I give you all that history and break down the language, I'll show you. See. This is what it is. You know, I just think you're being a little too sensitive. You know, now, if you want to use a different terminology, if that's the way you choose to identify, you're certainly in your right to do so. But you're not going to make me change my thinking. You're not going to make me adapt to you and do what you want to do. You could do what you want to do for yourself and for whatever community you consider yourself to be a part of. But when I have an understanding of language, when I have an understanding of history and how these terms have changed over time and certain terms mean one thing in the United States and in certain terms may mean other things in different countries or when you try to translate something to a different language, you know, it may not just easily translate over. So you might have to use something different. I mean, I get that, but see, they don't get that. They just want to be triggered. They want to be offended and they want to be in a position where they say, oh, well, you did this or you did that. And you see, we, we don't get any respect or it, it's time for us to get, you know, our benefits or it's time for us to get our reparations. But then when we come to ask for something, we can't get anything. And they want everyone else to sympathize for their plight. But they don't really care about these other people. They don't care about us. You know. Everybody now trying to be a protected class, a protected group of minority. They're just trying to get what they can get for themselves. You know? And, and like I say, I, I don't watch Fox News so much anymore. So I don't really know how they necessarily cover this. But if Fox News, supposed to be so-called conservative Fox News, piles in on this, with the whole, they were saying things that were sexist and misogynistic and disrespectful towards women, and they were being homophobic. And since they call themselves um, Hebrews and Jews, you know, and because they said that, you know, a number of the people that are over there that call themselves Jews are not real, they're fake, which is true. Not all those people that are saying that they're Jewish are truly Jewish as far as from a hereditary standpoint. Some of them are, a number of them are, but not all of them, you know. So then that's going to give them the license to go out there. Well, they were being anti-Semitic and they were being homophobic and, and racist and hateful and bigoted and hate speech and mis misogynistic and sexist. You know, and that also goes to show that in this country, even we being the only people having to deal with a slavery like this in this country and even across the world, that goes to show you that we have been very much so much of a faithful people and a church people because we'll stick to the to the word. We'll stick to tradition. We'll stick to the laws. We'll stick to the commandments. 
will maintain those standards. You know, it's not that, oh, you know, the Afro community is homophobic. It's like, no, it's just we we're more traditional. I'm a traditionalist. We believe in tradition. You know, for those of us that are church, we believe in keeping the word. We believe in keeping the faith. We believe in keeping the laws and the commandments and being obedient and serving. And if, if, the, if the book says this, we don't go out there and do something else. You know, you know, I'm not saying that doesn't mean you don't make any mistakes, but I'm not going to put myself in a position to where I'm saying, oh, well, I just live this lifestyle now, or uh, this is just who I am, or this is what I do, or this is what I identify with. And it's like, no, you may make a mistake, you know, but you know you did wrong. You repent and you try not to make those mistakes moving forward and do better. You know, so. They could talk about all they want to about this white evangelical base. And the political power it's had and the political power um, that's been conjured up, but. I think if we really wanted to show our faith base or our church base, I mean, I think within the proportions, I think we could bring out so much of a, a effort that could be right up there with theirs, if not better. You know, and I wanted to make a video about that too, about particularly kind of like from a, like a policy platform or political platform standpoint about defining ourselves, you know, identifying ourselves and making certain demands and defining what our Afro traditionalism, you know, you could even maybe say Afro conservatism, but I prefer to call it Afro traditionalism and with our faith, and what we believe for our communities, what we believe for our families, what our policy should be and what our platform should be. But like I said, I mean, I, I think that has to take a lot of the air out of the cell, at least in this instance with these school kids. Now I get it, they're young. You know, maybe they'll, hopefully they'll grow in faith uh, deeper as they get older. They'll mature. You know, they'll receive edification. But... You know, if you've been going to school for all these years in this Catholic system and then someone starts simply quoting certain parts that were accurate from the Bible on this is the way it should be. This is what the word says. This is right. This is wrong. This is moral. This is immoral. And you're like, so what? Who cares? Oh, you guys are hateful. That's hate speech. Even one kid said that the Bible wasn't a real book. Now, here he is, Catholic school. And OK, maybe it's a private school. It was a good school. Not everyone who's in some of these these schools are or are religious or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Just like, say, everyone who goes to Notre Dame University maybe isn't necessarily Catholic. But you're sitting here on a school trip that's supposed to be pro-life. A Catholic school, probably a private school, wearing your, your MAGA hats. And then you say the Bible is not even a real book? Well, maybe I guess so much for that white evangelical right wing base. I guess they're not that conservative. Maybe it's something else. And the last, well, one of the last things, uh, the, the Indian people. Now, if you watch some of the other videos, not so much that were filmed by the Israelite dudes, but by other bystanders, you got to see certain situations where the white kids are really showing themselves to be pretty uncouth and pretty unruly. And how there was no law and order. And somehow you couldn't really find too many adults that were 
being able to control these young people. You know, and they were being silly and being offensive. And even one of these Indian dudes, and I'm glad he did it, you know, because I'm sure they're not used to people addressing them like that. Uh, one of these Indian dudes went over, he said, hey, man, he's like, you're the illegal immigrant. You know, we basically should have built a wall to keep you out. He said, you know, you might only be here two, three generations. He's like, we've been here for thousands of years. You know, he's like, you owe us. And then the white kid's like, oh, but, uh, uh, so what, am I supposed to go back to Europe? But see, now you know how these dreamer kids feel like. You know, you try to pull that white privilege or whatever, you know, because you perhaps may still have a majority in general in the country, you know, you think, oh, well, you know, things will go our way. But then when someone corrects you and checks you and they let you know, it's like, hey, bro, have you done your family history? I mean, I know there may be some of us who haven't done our family history, but it's not like we're the only ones. You know, so, I mean, I know he was a young dude, but, you know, I'm glad that it wasn't the elder, it was this other, you know, Indian guy, but, I mean, I'm glad he checked him. You know, there was even one other, I think it was a priest, and I'm not sure, I would assume he was with the school, but maybe not. It was, uh, it was even this one priest, I'm assuming, who was there in a, with the white collar around his neck with the, with the black outfit. And, you know, he wasn't doing anything. He was just standing there. You know, he was just standing there. The Israelite dudes were speaking. The kids were doing what they were doing. The Indian groups were doing. And he was just standing there. I'm like, really? You know, you're not going to maintain any order. You're not going to settle these kids down. You're maybe not like, hey, you know, let's all get over here. Let's separate. And maybe it's getting a little unruly. You know, let's not spread out. You know, we, you know, someone may get lost and then we get on the bus and like, where's Billy? Where's Joey? And then you're trying to do a head count, you know, make sure everyone's accounted for. I mean, there's no control whatsoever. They just let them run around, you know, all kinds of ways. You know, now, as you will tend to see, I didn't like the intensity of, of these, you know, so-called Israelite brothers. You know, at one point in time, they even called that priest, I believe, a pedophile. I was like, come on, you don't even know this man. You know, how are you going to call him a pedophile? You know, so like I say, I mean, they, they, and that's why I have to disagree with them. You know, they, they will do a number of them, most of them you know, we'll do some things that are wrong, you know, like I say, I want to stay on code, but you know, wrong is wrong. And especially when it comes to staying true to the word, you know, you have to speak truth to power. You got to call it out. You can't just bite your tongue and be like, well, you know, I want to stay on code because, you know, they say some things that I like and they address it, you know, and they'll even go to the text and use it appropriately from time to time. It's like, now, nah, I mean, we, we have to acknowledge that. Uh, one of the brothers, he had the one that had the real big afro, he even had Star David. Now, if you would know and if you would look into all these symbols, whether if it's a cross or a fish or this so-called Star David, you know, all these symbols that get used, you would know that we shouldn't be using any of these symbols. You know, that's just like having icons and idols and rosemary beads and white Jesus pictures and stuff like that. That's that's no different than that. So, I mean, that's what really kind of got me that, you know, he's supposed to be considering himself a true Hebrew Israelite. But he wears a star of David piece and chain around his neck, you know, using that symbol, just like one of the other people over there would do. I mean, they even put it on their flag. You know, you don't read anything in the Bible about a star of David. You know, where did that symbol go from? Go look it up, check it out and see. That's why all these symbols and stuff like that, these rappers try to do these Jesus pieces and stuff, big crosses around their neck, you know. 
you know, we we don't need any symbols to show who we are. Let your actions show who you are. You know, you know, you're supposed to carry those things on your heart, not around your neck. Or, you know, a tattoo or anything like that. So just just put these symbols down. You know, focus on your heart, focus on your behavior. You know, but this is just kind of giving you a perspective that you're not going to see from the mainstream media. Just some things that really stood out to me that got lost once again in the noise, in the misinformation, disinformation. Um, and I would really like to put this out as a warning in the times that we're living in. For those of us that are still very traditional and church and we stick to the laws and the statutes and the commandments, we follow what the book tells us to do, you know, and you see that not just from the white liberal, that we'll be attacked for our beliefs and for our values and for our morals, our standards, our social norms. We'll be attacked not just by the white liberals, but we will also be attacked even by these so-called right wingers. You know. And I thought the First Amendment, you sitting here you're supposed to be in the nation's capital. And I thought the First Amendment was supposed to protect freedom of speech. Peaceful assembly. And religious practice, you know. Now, like I, like I said, you know, these, you know, these brothers are doing some things I didn't agree with, but they weren't getting violent. OK, so they were peaceful, peaceful assembly. They were exercising their First Amendment freedom of speech. And they were exercising their freedom of religion. But then you get these MAGA hat wearing. Asinine juveniles. And then these other idiots that you have, you know, at least they're kids. Then you get the idiots you get on television talking about, oh, they're homophobic. Hate speech. That did you hear what they were saying about how women should submit? That that was that was sexist. That was misogynistic. You know. You know, that's toxic masculinity. It's like, really? Are we gonna have another Gillette commercial? After this? They were bullying. They were being intimidating and threatening. They were aggressive, you know, because you know how they like to stereotype the so-called black man. So even with, you know, who in the White House, even with these Republicans and these so-called white evangelicals. You better watch your three. And you better watch your your uh your nine. Because all these finger pointings of, of, of hate speech and bullying and toxic masculinity. You'll get it on both sides. Please like, share, and um, subscribe. If you want to leave a good comment. Or ask a question, please leave it. Shalom.